So one of the best things I've got to say about running this YouTube channel for A-Level Chemistry is when a student gets in touch and they let me know how well they've done and that they thought that the videos had helped um, in the process. So back in December 21, Hania got in touch with me via Instagram to let me know that she'd gone from a grade C to a grade A in just six weeks. Absolutely amazing. And what she was saying was that she, in September 21, when she got the grade, just after she got the grade, she saw a girl called Yalda's video that um, I put up around about January, but um, Hania didn't see it until the September. But she saw that video on the channel and she said that really, really inspired her. It really helped her to um, turn the grade around. And basically, she wanted to do the same for other students, which I think is really, really generous of her. So communication started going backwards and forwards via Instagram. And with Hania's help, we've put together the slides that you're going to see. And basically, I'm just going to talk through how Hania did it. So I hope you find this really, really helpful and obviously, hopefully it will help you to organise your revision and get the grade that you're hoping for in A-level chemistry. So quick backstory about Hania and grades for chemistry. So she was awarded a TAG, a Teacher SS grade of a C in August 2021. That was no good for progression to uni. She actually wanted to study law. So she decided to sit her October exams and reapply for September 2022 start. And on results day, December 21, she was awarded a grade A for chemistry. So obviously she's very, very happy because she's off to uni in September to study law. So the way we've organised this, we've got three slides called top tips. So the first one you can see there is about the specification. And then we're going to go into some detail about the specific papers. So top tip one about the specification. So what Hania said was, you know, the first thing, the fundamental thing that you've got to make sure is that you know your specification really well. So if you haven't already downloaded it from uh, the exam board website, you really, really need to do that. What she did was printed out the specification and she went through it sort of with a fine tooth comb and colour coded the topics. So the red for the hardest topic, green for easiest, you know, the sort of thing there. And the rationale for that was it's really, really important to know at the start of your revision process where your difficulties are so you can prioritise your effort. Top tip two is all about the importance of the textbook and how useful that can be. So she used the textbook as a primary revision source before she went on to pass papers. So that photo there is the textbook that Hannah uses. It's the one I use with my students as well. I'm sure you're familiar with it. There are other textbooks, of course, but that's the one that Hannah used. Now, the great thing about this textbook is there are lots of worked examples. So Hani used these to work through and check that our understanding was there. Within each chapter, there's questions on each subsection. So she tried those. And then at the end of each chapter, there's the end of topic chapter questions. And she paid particular focus to the longer six mark questions. Any questions she got wrong, she went to my videos on that particular section and she said that she found it much quicker to use a video than to try and go over it in a textbook. So the third top tip is to do with past papers. So once she felt confident with most of the topics, she started on the past papers. And she said she did lots of them. Now, remember, Hania only had six weeks to turn that grade around so to go from a C to an A so she had to do she said between three to four papers per week. She did them in timed conditions without looking at her notes and what she said was you've got to do that in the real thing so might as well do the past papers like that. Obviously that's going to give you a more accurate indication as to how good you are. 
and then she made full use of the mark scheme. She was extremely strict with marking her own work. If she hadn't used the specific wording in the mark scheme, she didn't give herself the mark. Brilliant idea, this one, and I've heard a few students say this, and I'll share this with my students. Any question that you get wrong, it's a really good idea to make a flashcard of that question and stick a model answer on the back. Now I know Yalda said this in her video, so maybe Hani got the idea from Yalda, which is brilliant, and she reckoned that really, really helped her to stop making the mistakes. So she was focusing on questions that she got wrong. Now obviously the current spec, the first exam is in 2017. There are a couple of practice papers, they're not brilliant, but I suppose it's better than nothing. So there aren't many papers for the current spec. So she did use old spec papers, so they're the 2011 to 2017 papers, and she got those from Physics and Maths Tutor. I'm sure you're familiar with that site. Now, even though the format is slightly different on the older spec papers, it's still really, really good practice. And she did them in chronological order and left the most recent ones um, till closest to the exams. So we're going to move on to the three papers now, how she sort of tackled each paper in turn. I'll talk about that textbook in a second. So paper one is obviously full of calculations. It's probably the most quantitative paper of the three. She also said you need to be able to do calculations fast. You haven't got time to be racking your brain thinking, how do I do this again, that sort of thing. So to get good at doing calculations, to be able to do them quickly, she used Jim Clark's calculations in A-level chemistry. So that's a picture of the cover of that textbook. Now what she said about the questions, and I would, I would agree with this because I use this textbook, a lot of Jim Clark's questions are actually harder than the actual exam questions. So that's really, really good if you want to get good at calculations. So to help her prepare for the mind numbing facts, they're just the factual recall. So for example, transition metal precipitate colours, definitions I suppose fit into there. She used my videos to help with that, especially with the transition metal colours. Um, the way she did it was she made a poster, a sort of colour spectrum, and then underneath each colour she wrote the formulae of the transition metal species. Other things I've got to help with this, I've got Quizlet set, so again under the Macam Guy name, you could have a look at those and you could just, you know, test yourself via your phone or whatever device you use uh, on these mind numbing facts. For paper two, she used my videos again for each functional group and the associated mechanisms. And what she was saying about the mechanisms, it's really important that you can actually explain in words what's going on in a mechanism. Sometimes you, you do have to write about the mechanism. You don't just draw it out, you explain it. So it's good to be able to do that. Um, but especially if there's an unfamiliar mechanism on the exam, which they do like to ask, especially for the high grades, um, if you don't understand the mechanisms that you're supposed to know for the specification, then how can you apply to an unfamiliar one? So you really want to get um, mechanisms learnt inside out and understood inside out as well. She drew out the familiar mechanisms regularly. So all the ones on the specification, just write them out again and again and again. And for the big reaction flow chart, she drew them out. So there's one for aliphatic compounds, one for benzene compounds and one for phenol compounds. Again, I've got all the videos on those you can use to test yourself with. But what she did, and this is really extreme, but you know, she didn't have a long time to sort that, turn that grade around. Every three days, she would draw out from memory these big flow charts. And then the final thing she did was would get a member of the family to test her on the specific pathways. Obviously, the person testing you doesn't need to understand the chemistry, they just need to know that you've said. Uh, the correct conversion, the correct reagents, the correct conditions. So moving on to paper three, and there's another textbook I'll be mentioning in a second. This is much harder to revise for than papers one and two. Now, that textbook that I showed you the image of earlier, there's some really good synoptic questions at the back of that textbook. 
So you could use those to prepare for paper three. And then moving on to past papers, so obviously the, the first past paper for this current specification started in 2017. You really need to pester your teacher and ask them to give you access to the, the latest, the most recent papers, because some of them are locked down on the secure parts of the exam board websites. Um, I obviously keep the most recent ones back for mock exam purposes. I would never use them in videos because obviously that's, not, that's just not right. Um, but obviously you can ask your teacher to give you access to them um, to help with your preparation. Moving on to that textbook, paper three does contain questions to do with practical skills. So this textbook's really good. It's not particularly expensive. So I would definitely check that out. I'm sure other exam boards have equivalent textbooks. So I would advise you looked into that. And Hannah, you did say this. The bottom line is if you have revised well for papers one and two, and obviously if you've done everything that's already been mentioned so far in the video, you will have revised well for papers one and two, then you should already have a really um, in-depth knowledge and understanding of the content. So you shouldn't really have a problem with paper three. So I'm just going to finish the video by sharing some sort of words of advice from Hania herself. She's proven that this, this worked for her, went from a C to an A in six weeks. So she knows what she's talking about. So Hania says, be confident. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Don't let yourself tell you that you can't do it. Chemistry is hard, so be resilient. There will be setbacks along the way. Use setbacks to spur you want to push harder. And Hani has said in, in the communications we had, she came out of paper one and she felt that it hadn't gone well. But she sort of turned that around and she made that, you know, that was a sort of catalyst to do even better in papers two and three. And the last thing is you will make a lot of mistakes along the way. Obviously, the earlier you start, the, the more time you've got to turn things around. But use those mistakes as a, as a learning tool. Work through them. Make an effort to understand the reasons for your mistakes and how to put them right. And this is from Hania. If you do this, there's no reason why you can't do what she did and get an A, even an A star. So all that's left to say is a massive thank you to Hania. Um, really, really chuffed that you uh, got in touch and you shared all that advice with us. And obviously, very, very best of luck with your law degree in September.